The purpose of this podcast is simple. We want you to get to know your doctor before meeting them in person because you're making a life-changing decision and time is scarce. The more you can learn about who your doctor is before you meet them, the better that first meeting will be. There is no substitute for an in-person appointment, but we hope this comes close. I'm your host, Eva Shea, and you're listening to Meet the Doctor. Today on Meet the Doctor, my guest is Dr. Victoria Kozlowska. Thank you. She's a dermatologist, and she's here in New York City, where we're recording live today. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome, everybody. So you've had an exciting week. Tell us what you've been up to. Yes. So I have recently opened a dermatology practice. It's in the center of Manhattan on Madison Avenue, and I'm really excited about it. It was something I was planning to do for a long time. Originally, I was an academic dermatologist. I did a lot of studies. I was doing teaching, and I am interested in treating difficult conditions. But eventually, I I see that we need more personalized care. I wanted to spend a little bit more time with my patients because I was forced to see 30, 40 patients a day, sometimes in clinic. And that's something I was thinking that is not a good way to take care of patients. So I wanted to open a small place for me, for my patients to create this kind of like a family environment. My office is called Dermatology Circle. And uh, I didn't like the name institute or clinic or just a center because I wanted to be something very kind of like a friend circle, you know, so that people come back and they like what they, uh, the result, they like the environment so we can share, we can empower each other, tell the stories. And that was my vision. There's a lot of questions to ask here. Congratulations. First of all, welcome uh, back to New York. You mentioned studies in difficult conditions. So let's start there. What kinds of things were you studying and and working on while you were still in academic practice? And what were those difficult conditions? So I'm a dermatologist and dermatopathologist. A dermatopathologist, it's a person who examine skin under the microscope. So I like to dive in and understand what exactly is going on. And when I see a patient clinically and then I see what's going on in the microscope, sometimes I have a better idea what's going on. And in my practice, I've seen a lot of patients with autoimmune conditions, with difficult cases of hair loss, uh, inflammatory conditions, uh, difficult psoriasis cases, uh, chronic conditions. So And I tried to publish uh, those interesting cases for my colleagues. I have published a couple cases of pretty rare conditions that have maybe 20, 30 cases uh, in general. So it, it, I think it's exciting, but I think when in these cases, sometimes you need to spend time with a patient to find out what's going on and what's, what exactly is driving this disease. Sometimes you need two or three uh, visits to find out exactly what's going on. You sound like a, a detective a yeah, little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, I think that's how I would describe myself. Can you give us an example of one of those really surprising things that you discovered? Recently, the last interesting case I've published, it was a rare case of a condition that is caused by sunlight, but it causes inflammation in sebaceous glands, and you know, oily glands, and it presents in a very funny way. It can be misdiagnosed as a chronic autoimmune condition, kind of like lupus, but it's very benign and limited. So when we did biopsy, we found out what it was, and basically patient did not need long treatment, and he didn't have to have a diagnosis of lupus. So You just need sunscreen? <laughs> exactly. He just needed sunscreen, and actually he... I treated him, uh, he completely recovered, and then he had a wedding where he was outside and uh, the condition came back just because he didn't use sunscreen. And then, of course, we just had to repeat it one more time and he was fine. So He learned his lesson. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Anyone who's ever tried to make an appointment with their dermatologist using their insurance has certainly experienced the other side of what you said after that was that you were needing to see 30 or 40 patients yes. a day. So that's what, 10 minutes a person? Yes, it's it's horrible. And that's why actually I switched my practice as being direct pay or cash pay practice. And I personally believe that 
that's a model we are probably be moving towards in upcoming years because we as physicians we also are burnt out because of seeing uh, that many patients and insurance doesn't pay us for what we do very well and uh, i think a lot of patients think about physicians as being rich and very well doing but honestly i hardly make my living and i don't even have kids so i would say that i think it's beneficial for both and it's not absolutely not driven by money or um desire to become rich but just being able to spend time with my clients with my patients and communicate with them in a right way it strikes me that you're probably a bit of a risk taker so you just said i don't like the way this is going i'm going to go do it a different way and i think you probably also came to the united states yourself right yes. not your parents so let's go back in time a little bit tell me how that happened Um I'm going to cry now. <sighs> It's a lot. You're doing a lot. Now you're the first person that I've ever made cry on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So actually I didn't immigrate because of, you know, like a uh, bad life or anything like a lot of people do. Uh, I immigrated in 2011 and uh, I was living in Belarus. I was doing pretty well. I was a chairman of a dermatology department in our second largest medical school in my country and I was really happy, uh, but I wanted to learn more about dermatopathology, so I decided to spend two months in in the summer to learn more and uh, so I came to New York for like two months. And then I was kind of involved into studies research and I saw so many opportunities here so I just decided to make my living here <laughs> I've said sometimes you know moving across the country or moving across the world it's really not that complicated you just put your stuff in a suitcase and you just go and uh, if it doesn't work you just go back yes actually i came with two small suitcases and i wanted to buy new stuff in new york i took all my old clothing i was thinking about shopping in new york and throwing out all my old stuff and buy new stuff and then after those two months when i got involved into so many interesting research interesting papers and i was calling my husband and telling you know what i really don't want to come back because it's so it's so cool here and he was so supportive he said you know what let me try to get visa if i get visa i can work you can study and we can make it so he came with you he came after and he's here now too yeah 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 so you're, you're lucky to have him too he was totally on board yeah and now you're in the process of completely changing the way that you practice too. Yes, absolutely. So, talk about your vision. So, I like to incorporate into one place where I can practice medical and cosmetic dermatology. I think it's very important also because sometimes uh, when those two are divided, a patient doesn't get uh, an appropriate care because for example, if patient with rosacea comes to a dermatologist using his insurance, it's unlikely he would get uh, laser treatments which are very necessary in uh, early stages of rosacea or he would have to reschedule and come a different day and that will add up to kind of inconvenience i would say so in my practice i have everything uh, together cosmetic medical photography i have a photography station that allows me to photograph changes before and after so we can make a personalized plan what we need to improve and i think it's really cool dermatology can be really challenging if you're the patient because there's so much you can try to do on your own and i think a lot of us struggle to solve problems because you know you you can go to the store and just buy stuff right yeah. but everyone reaches a point where it becomes a crisis and they need help. Yes. And then there's the barrier of getting in. Yeah. And how are we going to pay for it? So, have you thought about how you're going to price your services for your patients so that they can actually come talk to you? Yes. 
I know what insurance pays for those visits and uh, I try to basically base my pricing based on that and based on time and based on type of service. So for example, if it's just a short visit for a couple moles that you want to check and uh, you want to come for 10 minutes just to show them to know if they are okay or not okay. So that would be one price. If there is a chronic condition when you know, you would spend half an hour with the doctor, it's a different pricing. And if it's maybe a hair loss, when we would want to take trichoscopy pictures and photography and talk about different options, which can be a long conversation about an hour, that's a different price. And then I also offer mole mapping services. That's when we do full body photography of all moles. It's more appropriate for patients with melanoma, chronic sun damage, that's a different price. And I looked up what the pricing is in similar institutions, what physicians charge in my area. And of course, I took everything into consideration. Is it common in New York City for people to just go to the dermatologist without insurance? I think it is common and uncommon. It depends on where are you in the city. In Manhattan, it probably is a little bit more common, but a lot of my colleagues in Brooklyn also start practicing direct pay. And from my residency program, there are about 10 people who are practicing in this model and nobody comes back. I think you're on the right track. I would much rather just pay and have my problem solved than take out my insurance card. And But there is so much even more to that. I had a patient a couple of days ago and I still practice couple of days in another office where an office takes insurances and the patient had one spot that was suspicious for cancer. It wasn't very, sh- I wasn't very sure. It was a very tiny spot and I offered biopsy because of course we were worried about uh, basal cell cancer and um, she has high deductible of about $4,000. And when you do a procedure, A patient doesn't know even what the price would be after this procedure. And I don't even know because uh, what I do, I just code it according to their uh, type of procedure I perform and send it to insurance. And maybe it could be 500, maybe it could be 600, maybe it would be 100. I don't really know. And when I explained it to patient, she denied biopsy and she signed a form that she doesn't want a biopsy. She would want to call insurance first and find out what the price is, and uh, it's a delay of care. Yeah, I don't know if the patient will come back, if she will do a biopsy. It was close to her eye and nose. Uh, what if it will grow and damage her eye and nerves? And she's a beautiful woman. She was also from Belarus, and she had the same name as me. She's from the same city. Can you imagine? No. Yes. Well, I hope she comes back. I hope so. What if it was something that travels quickly or well, are you worried luckily, about her? Luckily, basal cell carcinomas, they don't grow that quickly. So, mm. you know, even if that's what it is, it will take some time to, to increase. But it's still, it's a delay of care, which should, should have happened at the same day. Well, I hope that turns out well for her. I hope so, too. Yes, it's very frustrating. Where would you like to see this new practice of yours be a year from now? A year from now, I hope I will have maybe a colleague who can share with me what I'm doing. That's why I didn't even make it under my name. Of course, my last name is hard to pronounce, but I called it Circle just because I wanted other people to join it. Maybe we'll have uh, a esthetician or some other, you know, fun practices that we will offer our people and hopefully we'll grow. What do you love about New York City? Everything. (laughs) Everything. (laughs) What I don't like about New York City, maybe traffic. Mm. Sometimes I think it's a little smelly. (laughs) Yesterday, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Or the day before, the smoke was horrible, but I enjoy New York City. It's very expensive, it's hard to leave, it's uh, tough. Uh, Sometimes it's cruel, but I love it. Have you hired anyone to be on your team yet? Yes, I hired one person. She's right here. Her name is Eugenia. And she actually was a producer in Ukraine. She made a lot of uh, TV shows and she helps me a lot with media. And uh, she's amazing. That'll be helpful for marketing. So your team is growing. What do you think your patients can expect from you when they come to visit you? Well, 
they definitely should expect an honest professional opinion. And I'm that person that will tell the truth. I don't like to sell services that I think are not working. And I do both medical and cosmetic procedures, but I don't like to push unnecessary procedures. And uh, uh, although we have a lot of cosmetic services, uh, Botox and fillers and lasers to offer to our patients, I don't think they're always necessary. And so I'm totally comfortable to say, no, you don't need that. And um, I think that's how it should be. Which lasers do you have? I have a couple lasers. I have IPL, I have Erbium resurfacing laser. I'm getting LASMD for hair treatments and superficial resurfacing. Those are my three favorite ones. I have also NDYAG and uh, long pulse NDYAG for vascular lesions. So we basically have full spectrum of toys, so to say, you know, to cover all main things that a patient uh, may want, uh, pigmented spots, red spots, uh, superficial pigmentation, small wrinkles, everything that would usually is needed. I think another thing they could definitely expect from you is to solve whatever problem that they have and not give up. Yeah, it's definitely. Do you have any plans to do more research in the future? Yes, actually, we are making plans with one of the laser companies to study some conditions. And I think it's a great way to to give more science to cosmetic area because I think it's a wild west happening and it's a wild advertising of sometimes unnecessary procedures. I think patients are very, they don't know what's going on. Uh, they are not educated properly. I don't like the idea when a patient opens an app and buys a treatment without seeing a doctor because the treatment may be unnecessary. Patients are hunting for procedures and for a specific laser instead of seeing a person who would explain them what exactly the condition is and why we need this or that laser and why we need this procedure. So I think it somehow has to be changed, but I am scared it won't be changed because a lot of money is involved into, into that. But I mean, I, I can try what I can try, you know. <laughs> Education is... That's why it's yeah. so important that people understand and find someone they can trust. So what do you like to do away from work? I have two dogs, so we have a lot of fun. I live on City Island and we have beach 10 minutes uh, from our home and we have huge parks. So we spend a lot of time outdoors walking. What kind of dogs nature. are they? They are two little white uh, Bichon Freeze and West Highland Terrier. Foofy dogs. Yes. Bella and Chica. <laughs> we call them Chica Bella, like one name for two dogs. <laughs> this is a really exciting time for you. Yes. Very, very stressful, but exciting. You're going to make it. If someone's listening today and they want to come see you, where should they look for more information about you? It's a lot of information on my Instagram page. We have direct booking service from ZogDog and we're using a booking system, Jane where a patient can prepay the visit and we don't double book. So uh, we ask patient to leave a deposit just because that's the way we can allocate a specific time for them. And that, that's how it works. That sounds very easy. It is. In most parts of the country, you can't do that. So I think you can do it everywhere. You just, you just have to want to do this this way. I think it's risky for a physician because of course, it's longer time when you would have a full house uh, with patients. And I think it needs more patients. Anything you can do to make the process easier, which I think is why you're doing this, yeah. is a good thing. And I think you come out ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing yourself with us today. If you're considering making an appointment or are on your way to meet this doctor, be sure to let them know you heard them on the Meet the Doctor podcast. Check the show notes for links, including the doctor's website and Instagram to learn more. Are you a doctor or do you know a doctor who'd like to be on the Meet the Doctor podcast? Book your free recording session at meetthedoctorpodcast.com. Meet the Doctor is made with love in Austin, Texas, and is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.